So our next question says let f of x y equals to 1 plus x y using the method of Lagrange multiplier find the critical point of f on the unit circle that is under the constraint j of x y equals to x squared plus y squared minus 1 equal to 0. So our j of x is a, a unit circle meaning it's a circle of radius 1 and we have to look for the critical values given this constraint. So there are a couple of steps we have to follow as usual. So the first thing we need to do, I should change the color. So the first thing we need to do is actually to um, define our Lagrangian, right? It's very, very important to know that. A Lagrangian, a Lagrangian, all right? Now from this Lagrangian, we're going to compute the partial derivatives, compute the partial derivatives uh, from our Lagrangian. Once we compute our partial derivative, we can then solve. We can then solve the the simultaneous equation, the simultaneous equation, and from there we simply substitute in our constraint. In our constraint, and that will be, and those will be like the critical values. So, yeah. So those are the steps we have to follow. And let's begin with the first one. We have to define a Lagrangian. So there is a formula describing the Lagrangian, and this is a formula you have to know. And the Lagrangian is actually given as comma x y of our lambda equal to f of x comma y minus lambda our constraint factor. So simply substituting this given our equation, we are going to have our Lagrangian x comma y which is in terms of three variables, our f of x is simply 1 plus x and um, xy. 1 plus xy minus lambda into our Lagrangian is, um, well, our constraint function is x squared plus y squared minus 1. So that's our constraint function. So this will be our Lagrangian. So we are going to be computing our partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to y and the partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to lambda. So for the first case, our partial derivative of our Lagrangian function, this is where our attention is, of our Lagrangian function will simply be, the first thing is with x, with respect to x. I'm not going into details because I already explained this in previous video. So this will simply be zero. Differentiating one with respect to x is zero plus x y is a const is a product we use a product rule so we have to keep one function constant so y will be constant when we differentiate x will be one and if we keep x constant we differentiate y is going to give us zero so essentially it's plus zero now minus lambda notice that lambda is a constant so we can always keep it constant throughout the calculation so inside we have to differentiate with respect to x so differentiating x squared with respect to x will be 2x minus plus differentiating y squared with respect to x is 0 differentiating negative 1 with respect to x is 0 minus 0 so simplifying this we are going to have y minus 2 lambda x so that's it now the second one or the second partial derivative is with respect to y differentiating 1 with respect to y we are going to have 0 now plus we are going to keep x constant this time around we differentiate y with respect to y will be 1 minus lambda again we keep lambda constant inside when we differentiate x squared with respect to y we are simply going to have 0 plus now we're differentiating y squared with respect to y we're going to have 2y and then minus 0 and simplifying that we're going to have x minus 2 lam lambda y so this is our second partial derivative. Lastly, we have to look for a partial derivative with respect to lambda. So differentiating one with respect to lambda is zero. Differentiating x, y with respect to lambda is zero. Now minus. So the twist here is we are going to keep x squared plus y squared minus one constant. And then we differentiate lambda. And in that case, it will be one. So meaning that our answer here will simply be minus 
in bracket x squared plus y squared minus 1. That's the result. So those are the three partial derivatives, right? From here, we need to, so we are done with the first step. We've actually even computed um, the partial derivatives. Now, so we are going to equate these partial derivatives to zero and solve for the various solutions. So for the first one, we saw above y, we saw above y minus two lambda x to be equal to zero. The second one, x minus two lambda y to be equal to zero. The third one, minus x squared plus y squared minus one equal to zero. So this implies that y should be equal to two lambda x. And this implies that x should be equal to two lambda y. And this implies that x squared plus y squared should be equal to one. Now, from here we can get the various values of x, y, and lambda. And if we just name this quick equation one, equation two, and equation three, we say equation one in equation two, this implies that we're going to have x to be equal to two lambda into our y is two lambda x. So meaning that x will be four lambda squared x and x will cancel. So we'll be having four lambda squared should be equal to one. Lambda squared should be one and four and lambda should simply be plus or minus a half. So that's the value for lambda. Once we get the value for lambda, we can basically get the other values easily. So to get the value of, um, we can simply substitute one of these values in this in the above equation. So um, what we can do is if we take equation one and two and insert in in equation three, then we are going to have x, which is two lambda x. Now x squared will be four lambda squared x squared plus now y, which is y squared, will be y squared. So actually x is uh, is two lambda squared. It's the same thing basically, right? So this will be four lambda squared y squared to be equal to one basically. And we already saw the value of lambda. We're going to consider the different values of lambda, right? The first value of lambda is a half. So we if we insert a half in our equation, wait, are we, is it what I'm thinking? Anyways, let's just continue. So this will be like one on fold. Here will be x squared plus four into one on fold. Uh, and then one on fold here, again, equals one. X squared plus y squared. <laughs> exactly what I thought plus y squared is equal to 1 so meaning that essentially we have come back to equation 3 okay so um, so what we actually need to do in order to get the value of x and y is simply substituting lambda all through so if we said putting lambda equal to a half in 1 and 2 we're going to get i'm not going to like script script cut this part of the video just to see you know the struggle when it comes to solving these questions and it's perfectly okay to go through like to go in a different direction and always come back right so um our y will simply be um x and here our x will simply be y interesting so from this condition of x equal to y of x equal to y equal to x and x equal to y we can simply substitute this in our equation three in our equation three which is our constraint our constraint function which was actually the third part right the third part of our steps so substituting that in our constraint we see that our constraint is x squared plus y squared equal to one so meaning that x squared plus x squared should be equal to one 2x squared should be equal to 1. x should be equal to 1 all over the square root of 2, which is root 2 and 2. And since the square root is plus or minus root 2 and 2, so we saw that x is y. Therefore, y will also be plus or minus square root of 2 and 2. Therefore, our critical points, given our constraint, will simply be root 2 on 2, comma minus root 2 and 2. And also minus root 2 on 2, comma 
with two and two with two and two uh, so th- actually i think there are even like four of them but uh, something like this right that's it because we can also have root two and two root two and two and minus root two and two minus root two and two but these are the these are the main critical points so that's it for this video and see you guys in the next video